Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the Squire Paranormal series that was released in late 2020. So if you don't know Fender, they've been really going on this alternate reality, paranormal, parallel universe type series. And this is the most affordable one yet, because the Parallel Universe 1 and 2, those were made in the USA, they were rather expensive. And then last year they stepped it down with the Made in Mexico lineup, those were a little bit more affordable. But the Paranormal series is actually really affordable, and that's because they're doing it under their Squire brand. So this lineup consists of six guitars and one bass. I did a nice overview video if you want to check that out. But basically, there's two different groups of guitars and one bass. So you've got the 90s grungy alternative type guitars with the Tornado, the Cyclone, and the Supersonic. And then you've got the Telecasters, the offset Tele like this one that we're going to talk about today. And then you've got a Thin Line and a Baritone Cabernita. And the series rounds off with a 54 Jazz Bass. So today we're going to talk about the Offset Telecaster. This model and configuration originally debuted within the Fender Custom Shop, and I guess people have been making parts casters of these things for years. But the first time that Fender actually did a run of these guys was in 2016. They announced them at the Winter NAM show, and that was under the American Standard lineup. Then one year after, they changed up some of the pickups and other things about these guys and did it under the American Professional lineup. So this is something relatively new for both Squire as well as Fender. You can even find a Made in Japan version called Radwimp's Telemaster Ace. It was kind of a signature guitar of a Japanese rock band. Apparently another brand owns the Telemaster name, that's why these things are called the Offset Telecaster. But you can find these guys in pretty much every pickup configuration, from SSS to HS to even a P90S, or even a P90 P90 with a Karina body. So if you're digging this shape, there's definitely a version out there for you. And I've actually done a review on a 2017 American Professional. It was a CME exclusive. It had a walnut finish. And all the comments in that review were saying, oh, that's a really cool body style. I like it. However, it's just a little bit too expensive for me. So the reason why I decided to do this review is this is the most affordable option that this has ever been. I mean, the Made in Japan ones started around a thousand bucks and even the brand new American ones were around 15. So when these guys are showing up at 399, it's it's the first time that these things have become affordable, so I thought it was worth checking out to see if it was any good. And they're offering these guys in surf green as well as a natural color, which kind of looks slightly walnut-like as well. So in case you're not familiar with what this is, it is a Jazz Masters body. You've got the forearm contour right here. You've got a little bit on the back. It's got the offset body. That's where it gets its name, offset, then Telecaster, because everything else about this is Telecaster. You got your Telecaster neck pickup. You've got the Tele bridge pickup. Even the whole bridge setup actually comes from a Telecaster, including your control layout here. The pickguard's kind of a, a combination of the two, but the neck definitely comes from a Telecaster with that small style headstock. So basically, if you love an offset body, but you love everything else about a Telecaster, you're gonna like one of these things. But what's my first impressions of this guy? Pulling it out of the case, I mean, I have not done a lot of Squires. I had only touched those Baritone Jazz Masters. I was quite impressed, you know, with the first look at this thing, because I didn't really know what to expect not knowing a lot about Squires. I was kind of expecting something a little bit cheap feeling, but this still felt like a pretty good quality product. Something that always resonates with me, taking it out, you see the headstock first. It's this really nice, beautiful white maple look, and it's like heavily glossy. Lost. I mean, you can see this thing definitely shines. It's got a good weight to it as well. I mean, it's not overly light. It's not super heavy either. But the thing that really stood out to me that I really did not like at first is the neck profile on this thing. It is super slim. I mean, this is like hardly even a neck at all. The C shape, but since it's so slim, I mean, it's got really sharp shoulders right here. It just feels so flat. So if you're one of those guys that likes to wrap your thumb in play, this is not going to be a comfortable neck to you. But I found that it actually helps me adapt my playing style so my thumb rests on the back. I mean, if you're doing the shreddery type stuff, this is actually going to be a perfect neck for you. So that's either going to be a love it or leave it type situation, but First impressions here, I'm actually okay with this thing. So let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. 
inside the offset Telecaster. I've got to say, I was quite surprised with what I found under this pick guard. I wasn't really expecting anything much, but what I found, wow, you've got a humbucker route under there and a single coil route. So that really opens up the possibilities of what you could do to modify this guitar. You can leave the single coil in the neck, you could put a humbucker, you could do the P90, you could even put a mini humbucker in here. Now the middle position, you're a little bit more limited. You could add that third single coil in the middle to kind of have one of those Nashville style tellies. But that's good to know just in case you want to modify this guitar later on. Like you want to start by playing this one and then move on to some fancier electronics. Because the pickups in here, they're just pretty basic stuff. They don't really have any type of fancy name. They don't really have any type of fancy markings here. Fender just calls them the Fender designed Alnico pickups. But here you can see in your bridge pickup cavity, it's just your standard stuff. It looks like it says Q91 potentially. And the only thing I see in there is a B. But speaking of the body, this is made of Okume, something like that, O-K-O-U-M-E. Epiphone usually advertises it as mahogany, so it's not the same type of body wood that you would find on like the American or Made in Japan versions. As far as our electronics here, it's just kind of a cheapy switch, but the most important thing is how does it feel? It's very stiff and satisfying to move, so I don't think I really have any major issues with that. And I like that all this stuff is actually shifted so far down, you don't have that normal issue of not being able to get it out of the bridge pickup position, so that's nice. And here you can see the type of pots that they're using. I don't see any type of readings on them. But we've got clean body routes, so everything's actually looking pretty good here. And our output jack is actually all the way over here. That's not something you normally find on a Jazz Master. Unless we're talking Ultra Jazz Masters anyways. But it looks like our pickup readings, the bridge is about 7k ohms. Our neck position's reading a little bit hotter actually, so this will be what, 3.5ish? Yep. And that's just a master volume and a master tone here. And before I move on here, I actually want to elaborate a little bit more on this bridge. So we've got the three saddles, kind of vintage Tele style, but it's strung up from the factory through the body, but you do have the option to run it through down here if you would rather. And I kind of feel bad for saying it. Knowing that I can do all these modifications to it makes me love this guitar even more because, <laughs> I mean, you could do even non-traditional stuff, like make it a Cabernita Tele with the regular Tele setup, get some Filtertron pickups in here, gold foils. I'd really love to have a pure vintage 65 Jazzmaster neck pickup in here. But the body, it's just a full gloss finish. Just your regular contours here, kind of like a Stratocaster right there, or a Jazzmaster, which, which is what this body is stylized after anyways. But then once we move on to the neck here, it's all pretty much standard stuff here. It is a maple fretboard joined on top of a maple neck. If you catch it at the right angle, you can see that the woods kind of reflect the light differently, so you can see the difference between the neck wood and the fretboard material. At the same time, they could have done it a single piece maple and did the skunk stripe treatment like Fender is known for. But the difference between the the overseas made ones and the USA made variants are the type of material they use in here. It's just a black plastic instead of a walnut wood. But this thing even has some beautiful wood grain just within the fretboard. That's looking pretty nice to me. You know, for a $400 guitar, so far I'm actually pretty happy with this thing. So we got 22 narrow tall frets. That's the same type of fret wire that was on that 2017 model. And it's a nine and a half inch radius. And let's go ahead and grab our specs. As far as our nut width, it looks like we got a pretty standard 1.64 inches, a little bit slimmer than some guitars, but I bet this gets pretty wide. Wow, actually only two. That feels really wide up here, but honestly, with the dimensions, it doesn't seem that bad. First fret neck depth, 0.84, wow. You know, these measurements, they make it seem like it's something completely different. I mean, then 0.89, so that tells you how skinny it really is. I mean, this neck, I mean, it feels like it's almost not even there. Even this doesn't illustrate it that well, but this is your first fret and then it moves on to the 12th. As far as our scale length goes, it's the standard Fender 25 and a half inches. I wouldn't call it my favorite neck profile in the world. I'm really hoping that the baritone Cabernita has something a little bit more fuller feeling. But pretty much the only bad thing I can say about this guitar comes down to the nut. I'm not sure if this is technically a defect or not, but the nut appears to be slanting. So I don't know if they didn't cut that channel down far enough, but it's just like leaning there. I'm not really sure if that has a major effect on the guitar or not, but so far it seems to play okay. As far as the face of the headstock, we've got the vintage style tuners. So you put the string down and then you wrap it around. You have a single string tree and it just says Squire by Fender. I think it would have been a nice touch if they would have put like paranormal underneath there or something. 
Now, I just want to take a second to mention, I did not actually have to touch these frets or polish them or anything. Now, it might be because this is a brand new series. Usually those Epiphones, I always have to give them a super polish. I mean, they're still a little bit scratchy. So you can tell it's definitely not as high quality of a fret wire as some of the higher end instruments. But good enough to get you going. And then moving on to the back here, not too much to go over. You just got the fair rules. Looks like if you get really close, you can see some indentation to the finish. So just very small finish blemishes from that installation process. But everything else, you know, pretty basic stuff here. Strap button on the bottom side, as well as on the top horn, and a four bolt on neck that says Squire. You think they could at least put Paranormal on the neck plate? Come on, Fender. You, it's nowhere on this guitar. That's kind of a letdown. Moving on to the back here, you've got tons of wood grain. I like it when that's the case, so I'm pretty happy with the way that this one looks. Because you got the mint green finish going on, so you don't get to see the natural wood grain under this one like you do with the natural finish. But at least you got a little bit here on the neck. It appears there's a very small area where the clear coat's actually chipped. So I guess that's something to keep an eye out for if you're buying one of these at a store. It looks like our serial number says CY20. I'm guessing that stands for 2020 and made in China. This one weighs seven pounds, 3.7 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in and see if it sounds any good. <laughs> Now that we know everything about the Paranormal Offset Telecaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Now that I'm a little bit more familiar with Fender guitars as compared to the first time I reviewed an Offset Telecaster, I found this thing to be actually quite comfortable. It might look like an abomination, but it's quite comfortable if you like the Offset body style. I think a lot of people like this because Telecasters are quite clunky guitars, so having all these comfort carves on here, forearm contour as well, it really does make for a very comfortable guitar with the bright Tele style pickups. So I made a little pro and cons list here. 
Pro, 399 bucks. It's the cheapest way to ever get into one of these. So I think that is an awesome win for us. It does have Tele-like tones out of these pickups. However, they're very bright and shrill sounding. They were definitely not the highest end single coils out there, but it's nothing that you're gonna have to replace right away. It's kind of funny though. I thought this sounded amazing in the room. But when I listened back to the recording, it's like, ah, oh, is that really the same guitar? The distorted tone was so bad. I actually fixed that in post. I added some bass. But you could also do that at your amp before recording. So if you plan to record with one of these, definitely crank your bass up a little bit and then you'll get a little bit of a nicer tone. <laughs> I actually found myself really liking this neck pickup with just a little bit of overdrive. It really has that angry Telecaster tone. And as far as the quality control goes, we didn't really find much. I mean, that little chip in the neck is kind of a, a buzzkill, but if anything, it gives you even more reason to go ahead and take some sandpaper and turn this into a satin finish, because then it'll be even easier to play. So ultimately, would I recommend this guitar? Yes, but maybe upgrade your pickups here, because I mean, even custom shop Fender pickups are not that expensive to put in here, and you definitely have tons of modding opportunities as we found underneath the pick guard. So hopefully this video helps you make an educated decision whether this guitar is right for you or not. Well, let's go ahead and swap over to the black light test. Not too much going on here. Your pick guard glows. You get a little bit of a glow on your neck here and face the headstock. This is mainly just for fun on a brand new guitar. Unfortunately, these guys do not get a gig bag or case or really any case candy. But if you are interested in being the next owner of this particular Squire Offset Telecaster, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. If you're interested in a new one, I do have my new Guitar Day program that can help get you a very small discount on one of these from a Fender authorized dealer. All right, thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.